Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that we might come to God, be forgiven our sins, and live in right relation to Him through faith in Jesus Christ. God sent His Son into the world that none of us should perish, but that we shall have everlasting life. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through Him might be saved. Saved of sin, saved from death, and saved from hellfire. It's a simple process. You receive faith in Jesus Christ and His death on the cross for your sins and mine, so you yourself will not have to incur eternal punishment. There are many here today that will be tried for their crimes by the law, and they will go to punish they will be punished by the law. They will go to jail or be in service. Some sort of, sort of punishment. And God also has a criminal justice system. God has a criminal justice system. But He doesn't use police officers. He uses angels. And He doesn't have a jail. He has a hell fire. And He has provided Jesus Christ the way out. Jesus Christ is the bail bondsman of the spirit world. Jesus Christ is the way out of hellfire, the jail of God. We have faith in Jesus Christ. We have no need of a lawyer but Him. When we stand before our judge on judgment day, Jesus Christ is the final advocate and criminal defense attorney of all spirits. On Judgment Day, you will want no attorney but Christ Himself. But you will not have Him to be your attorney unless you have your faith in Him. Attorneys and lawyers are needed here on this earth. But in the spirit world, Jesus is the only attorney you're going to ever want. There are too many sins. Your criminal record before God is too long for you not to want Jesus Christ to be your attorney before God on Judgment Day. So, He died on the cross for your sins, for your crimes. He died on the cross for your sins that you may not be guilty before God on Judgment Day. On the Day of Judgment, when the holy government of God will judge the sin in the spirit world. In the spirit world. See, whenever man dies, he comes out of the body. And he goes to his respective place according to the righteous judgment of God. He goes to heaven or hell, and then he waits his, his rightful lot until he is to come before the judgment seat of God. And he will be judged according to his works. And those who are not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. But those who are written in the book of life will be will go to heaven but will be given rewards according to the works that they did for Christ. I hope that someday that I will not only be saved from my sins, but that by doing good works for Christ, I will be rewarded and that when I go to heaven, I will uh, be storing up treasures for myself in heaven, so to speak. In a literal sense. And literally, everybody is going to die. That is true. And we shouldn't be afraid that we're going to die. We shouldn't gonna be afraid of dying all of the time. But it is true. People do die. It happens. And the question is, are you right with God now? Or are you just going to be right with God on your deathbed confession? It's, it's better to be right with God now, mainly because God put us on the earth for a reason. And the only real way we can figure that out is by being a Christian and studying the Bible, and trying to live right. Because God will reveal things to us through His Spirit. God will reveal things to us, what we should do, in the path of righteousness that we should walk in. 
and he he will speak to us. He will speak to us the, the things that we should do, the, the the meaning of our life, the meaning of why he put us on the earth, and why we came into the earth. What was the reason? What was the purpose for that? You can only find that through the one who put you here, and that is the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and, and only can you can you apprehend that if you if you get away and you, from your skepticism and your rationalism and your atheism and your agnosticism and you say you take a leap of faith and you say you know what you know what maybe this young preacher up here he might be young and he doesn't know how to preach that well but maybe I do need to get right with Jesus Christ maybe I do need to take a leap of faith and, and put my faith in Christ. Maybe I do need to start living right. Maybe I do need to start uh, loving my neighbor as myself. Maybe I do need to start loving God with all my heart, soul, and mind, and not just live for myself all the time. Because the time is short, and the hour is late. Who knows whether we will die, or the world will end, or some calamity will come? Many of us today profess to be atheists. Charles Darwin proves it. Millions and millions of years ago, there's evidence. There's just evidence we all came from monkeys. Evidence. But nobody really believes that deep down in their heart that we came from monkeys. Nobody really, really cares. But it's the intellectual excuse for saying that there is no God. Now come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Be reasonable, look at this tree. It was created by God, obviously it was created. But you will say, no, no, no. No, Charles Darwin proved that it evolved millions of years ago from primordial soup. That it was not created by God. That, that evolved from a primordial amoeba. It was not created, they say. Oh really? Did it really? That is really smart. So on your deathbed, is that what you're going to think? On your deathbed, are you going to say Charles Darwin said that that tree evolved from amoeba, so I'm not going to have any faith in God on my deathbed, right? No, no, that's not what you're going to say. You're going to say, wait a second, wait a second. I'm hours away from dying here. What if there's a God? What if there's a hell? And I'm wrong. What if there is a hell? What if I need to get right with God right now? Well, well, that would be really a tragic thing if you waited all the time into your deathbed to repent and get right with God. That would really be tragic. Because your entire life would have been completely wasted. Wasted. You're worthless. You would have been, you, your life would have been completely worthless. If you did not, if you did not live your life in faith for Christ, but God does not want you to live a worthless life. He does not want you to live a worthless life. He wants you to have meaning. He wants you to serve Him. He wants you to embarrass yourself in public and preach the gospel. Uh, he doesn't want you to rely on your intellect so much and think that there's no God. You know what I think? I think that city people tend to be atheists more often than country people. In my opinion, city people tend to be atheists more because, because they don't look at trees enough. They look at buildings, and they look at streets, and they look at man-made things, and they look at cars. But oh, I have never seen anything such as a tree that was so beautiful and was such a creation of God. Trees are the one thing in this city that are not man-made. That tree there, all these trees are made by God. There's no man on the earth that ever made these trees. Surely they farmed them and cultivated them, but they didn't make them. God made these trees. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit made these trees. And that's proof that God exists, in my opinion. It's very reasonable to say that there is a God, because these trees exist. 
Now, unless, of course, you're like Charles Darwin and you think that they all evolved from an amoeba millions of years ago, take your pick. But I think it's pretty reasonable to say that these trees were made by God. So since these trees are made by God, probably, it is also reasonable to conclude, uh, who is God? I mean, a lot of people say today that there's all these different religions. How do we know which one is right? Is it Buddha? Is it Muhammad? Which one? I'm confused. Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That's pretty simple. By that, implicitly, Jesus Christ denied Buddha, he denied Islam, he denied all his religions. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. One time, Jesus was in a conversation with the woman from Samaria. And she asked him a question. And the Samaritans did not worship the religion of the Jews. They did worship a different religion. They were kind of, you know, a cult. And the, the Samaritan woman asked Jesus kindly, and she said, Sir, uh, are we supposed to worship on the mountain, or are we supposed to worship down in Jerusalem? And you know what Jesus said? You know what he said? Do you think he said all paths lead to God, to that woman? Do you think he said, you know, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to heaven. Do you think that's what he said? No, it's not what he said. You know what he said? He said, you Samaritans don't know what you're worshiping. Salvation is of the Jews. But then he said, the time will come and it already is now that the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. And by implication, that means that those who truly worship God are worshiping through the Holy Spirit by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way, truth, and life, and no man comes unto the Father but by Him. And there is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved, the Bible says. And so, we must make a decision about Jesus Christ. We must. It is imperative. It is imperative. We must make a decision about Jesus Christ right now. And why right now? We should make it right now because the Holy Spirit elects people by opening their hearts in certain times in their life to the Gospel. Now, if you rejected what I was saying right now, I think that the devil would come in and harden your heart, and no matter of preaching of any other Gospel minister would ever save you. So, uh, you should repent now. You should get right with God now. You should pray to God and repent. You should say, God, God, I am sorry for my sins. I have not been living right. I repent my sins. Uh, please forgive me my sins. I have really messed up. Uh, and, 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 and now, God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. And you pray that in your heart. And you will repent. If that's repenting, you turn your life around. And you don't look back. And you stop hanging out with friends that don't live for God. And you get new friends that do live for God. And you get yourself a Bible and you try to you try to live by the Bible. But especially the New Testament. Don't don't uh, don't try to live by the Old Testament. That'll get you all messed up. But if you live by the New Testament, you'll be in the will of God. You'll be in the will of God. And you'll find out what God means, what it's all about. And you'll get hooked on Jesus. And you should never get off uh, unhooked from Jesus Christ. He said, take my yoke upon you, for it is easy. My labor, my yoke, my yoke is easy. And a yoke in that time, was a, it was a parable. It means that take my teaching upon you. He was actually kind of saying, take my yoga upon you. Of course, don't take, don't practice yoga, because yoga is from the devil. Yoga is from Hinduism. But no, take Jesus' yoke upon you, the teaching of God, the New Testament, the Bible. And, 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 and you will figure out, wow, you know, man, I've never understood the Bible until now. I, I finally get it. I finally get it, man. 
and and then you'll you'll even get discernment. You'll be able to you'll be able to discern people, and you'll be able to figure out things that you never you never knew before, and you'll be able to test, and you'll be able to know right from wrong. And it will be as if blinders were taken off of your eyes, and you'll be able to see things you never saw before. You'll be like, man, I can't believe I did that for so many years. Man, I just can't believe it. You see, God will open up your heart. He'll open up your eyes. He'll be able to... It'll just be awesome. Jesus is life, man. He's life. Get hooked on Jesus. Don't don't deny God. Don't be a godless atheist. Don't, don't just keep on ignoring, ignoring God all the time. He loves you. The question is, do you love God? He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Are, are you keeping his commandments? All you got to do is repent and get right with God. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll work a work in you. And I pray he opens up your hearts and, and, and he puts the Holy Spirit in you. It's awesome. Jesus is life. Jesus is life. And, and he will never let you down. But, but, but... But don't be deceived. I mean, in this world, you will have tribulations. Uh, you know, so many preachers today, like Joel Osteen on TV, Mr. Happy Joel Osteen, Lord bless his soul, all he'll ever want you to preach is, uh, all he'll ever preach is, God wants you to have a happy time. Well, makes happy, you, happy, all the time. Well, it makes you feel good. Feel good message. But, but the truth of the matter is, I mean, sometimes we're happy and sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're joyful and sometimes we get angry. I mean, that's just the truth. But you know why Joel Osteen's so popular? Because he's not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why he's so popular. He just preaches what people want to hear so that he'll get their money. Money. He should, he should give up his profession and, and try to figure out how to make money an honest way. So anyway, um, yeah, Jesus is here to save your soul and to heal the sick and to cast out devils. And he does this through faith in Christ. He's ready to save you through faith in Christ right now. So I, I, I challenge you to, to give your life to Christ. Don't put it off, because the more you put it off, the more hard your heart will get. The more hardened your heart will get. Don't harden your heart against the Lord. Please do not do that. The only way, the only way to live this life is faith in Christ and be hooked on Jesus. The only way. It just doesn't make sense any other way. You get confused. You get without direction. You won't know what way to go in your life if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. You get totally confused, walking in circles all the time. Jesus Christ is calling out to you right now, I think. I think that the Spirit of God is speaking through my throat. I think that God is calling out to you. Please turn to Christ if you have it. And if you go to church, don't use that as an excuse. There are many people who go to church who are obviously not followers of Jesus. Be a follower of Jesus. Become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Don't think that going to church means that you'll go to heaven. It, there's nothing, there, nothing could be further from the truth. And don't think that one time you were baptized, and so that means you're going to heaven. Nothing could be further from the truth. Jesus said, I'm the only way, truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's pretty plain and simple. He didn't say no one comes to the Father but by baptism. He didn't say no one comes to the Father but by going to church. He said no one comes to the Father but by, but by Him, but by Jesus. And what does that mean? It means faith. It means living your life in complete and utter dependence on Jesus Christ. And, 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 and living by faith. You know, that's just the terrible, devilish thing about this country. 
is that it's forsaken its first love. It's forsaken faith in Jesus Christ. You know, all of you people here, all of you, your forefathers probably believed in Jesus Christ. This nation was built upon the faith of the Puritans. And those guys there, I mean, their parents probably were Christians, or their grandparents, or their great-great-grandparents were Christians. And do you know why that was? Because during the Great Depression, people had to have faith. It was the only way to do it. Hey, you, man. Hey, man. Am I Sound okay? Sound good, man. Oh, All right. Right. Don't give up. I just had to come give him some encouragement. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yes, God, um, God bless you, man. Oh, thank you. See, I know a lot of people act like they don't listen, but they hear you. Oh, you know? I know. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, or they hear the Lord. You know, the Lord know. You know, so I hear you. But I just want you to know. Thank you. Bless yeah. you. We got a couple of people that come out here and do it too, you know, so. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes they got to get some more encouragement. You know. Yes. Yes. You sound I, good, I man. You know, look, people walking by it over, like I said, I'm glad it's out there acting like they don't hear, but you yeah. know, they you do. got to hear the oh, words. They're sitting you know. there. They can't. They you know, can't. Yeah. That's yeah. possible. A lot don't want to hear, but I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you got to hear the word of the Lord. That's you know. right. You know. All right, take it easy, man. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. So in the Great Depression, man, in the 1930s, man, people had to have faith in Jesus Christ. It's the only way they could live. It's the only way. And uh, before then, the pioneers, the Little House on the Prairie, and in the Little House on the Prairie times, people out on there in the field, faith in Jesus Christ is the only thing that mattered, man. Most of the people didn't even have any jobs. They were just trying to survive, scrape it. Little house on the prairie out there in the wilderness in the 1800s. Today, and faith not in Buddha, little house on the prairie, no Buddhists on little house on the prairie. No, it was Christ alone that kept them together, kept those families together. Jesus Christ is the only way, truth and life. So we need to get back to the faith of our forefathers. We need to repent and be like, you know what, dang it, I need to stop being an atheist. This life isn't working. I need to be a Christian. That's the only way to make sense of anything. This courthouse that I'm preaching here is tries and judges criminals based on the laws of the Puritans. You say, no, uh, no, no, no. Yes. Yes, all of the laws of America, all of our sense of morals come from the Puritans. Study your history. Study your history. The Puritans were the, were the innovators of American law. And where did they get their laws from? They got it from the Bible. The Bible. The Bible is the law book of God. The righteous moral standards of God. And now we've got all these atheists all over the place telling us how to run our country. And I think they ought, they ought to step down. And Christians need to get up back on their feet. And they need to start living right. And they need to reclaim this country for Jesus. That's what I think. We need to get back to God in this country. Man, are we really off, off balance now. We need to get back to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And get away from all this yoga and all these Hindu gods and get people back to Jesus Christ. It's the only way to get the righteousness back in this country. Gangstas, thugs, all the people that are here, coming in here, committing crimes, it's because they don't have the Bible in their life. And the white collar criminals too. There's no faith in Christ. No faith in Christ. These white collar criminals. The only way to live this life, the only way to have a, a clear conscience, for God and men is to live for Christ Jesus Christ. And uh, so anyway, we need to be forgiven our sins. Yes. But that's not the only thing. We need to live right. Yeah. We need to live right. We need to live for Jesus. Not just
just not just be forgiven by Jesus, but live for Jesus. We need to do it. We need to do it now. And we need to continue living for Jesus Christ. Uh, on Judgment Day, do you think that the Lord is going to say, so, were you forgiven by Jesus Christ? Yeah, he's going to say that. He's going to say that. But you know what he's also going to ask you? Did you learn to love Jesus Christ? Are you going to be able to say yes to that? I love you, Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Are you keeping Jesus' commandments? I am, I think. I'm trying to. He said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I see a whole bunch of creatures in front of me, and so I'm preaching the gospel to them. God loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. But, that's not the question. The question is, do you love God? And do you want His plan for your life? Because if you love God, you'll keep His commandments. That's just, that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. And so, uh, you know, God who can forgive our sins through faith in Jesus' death on the cross. That's obvious. Most people know that. But, are you living for Jesus? That's the question. God loves you. Everybody knows that. Happy, smiley face Jesus. No problem with that. Rainbow Jesus. God loves you. That's not going to change your life. But the question is, is, do you love Jesus? And if you love Jesus Christ, you will keep His commandments. You will live right. You will try to live right at least. I mean, you won't be perfect. That's obvious. But you'll, you'll try to live right. You'll try to have a clear conscience. That's what it's all about. And when you, and when you sin, and when you screw up royally, you ask God to forgive you. And, and you just keep on going. You try to keep His commandments. That's what it means to be a Christian. I, I highly urge you, anyone today, to come to church with us. We have a house church. It's kind of like a cell group. We meet with a group of people every Sunday and we share what's going on in our life and uh, sing and stuff. We eat together. We get food and stuff. If any of you today is interested in coming to house church with us, we'll give you our email and, and we'll get up with you. But if uh, you're not interested in that sort of thing, that's okay. But. If you do go to church, or if you're not going to church, I highly urge you to go to a good church where there is a cell group. A cell group. A cell group is something where they meet in houses, in small groups. It's nice and uh, fine to go and hear a preacher on Sunday morning, but you must get involved in the community of Christians. If you want to save your soul from hellfire and the judgment to come, you can repent right now and get right with Jesus. That's all great and good. But the question is, when the devil comes and he tempts you through people and things get hard, you're going to need other Christians to lean on. And that's why I highly urge you to get involved in a cell group or a house church. A small group, Christian group. This is very important. To cultivate your faith and uh, learn how to be a disciple of Jesus. And there are a lot of churches that aren't really living right. So I would urge you to find a church that does. They're out there. You know, there's a lie being spread today that all Christians are hypocrites. All Christians are hypocrites, they say. But that's just a lame excuse for not finding out the truth. Not all Christians are hypocrites.
hypocrites in my opinion. I've been a Christian for 11 years and I've met a lot of hypocrites, but I've also met some true Christians. And there's about 10% uh, true Christians in this world and 90% hypocrites, so don't be deceived. But if you look for a real Christian group that's living for God, and you can learn how to be a follower of Jesus, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So don't let it be, don't, don't say, ah, these people are hypocrites. Oh, it proves what I was thinking anyway. No. No, don't be lame. Live for God. Live for God. He has so much for you. So much. He has so much for you. And, and I hope, and I pray, that some heart would be open today. Some heart would be open to Christ. Dear God, I pray that people, the atheists of this country, would just stop it. Stop it, atheists. Stop being atheists. It's so obvious that there's a God. So obvious. You know, atheists, you know what the Apostle Paul said to the atheists of his day? He said, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all men who suppress the truth with their ungodlessness, their godlessness. In other words, their atheism. See, the Apostle Paul didn't use the word atheism because it wasn't around in his day. But he used the word godlessness, godlessness. In other words, being without a God in your life. You need a God in your life. You need Jesus Christ. He's the God you should choose to be in your life. Because He's righteous. And He'll keep you out of jail. Well, mostly. Sometimes when you preach the gospel, you get put in jail for that. But that's because evil people exist and they try to falsely accuse others. But that doesn't happen all the time. I mean, mostly Jesus Christ will keep you out of this place. He's righteous. He's the one who invented morals in the first place. So please let Jesus Christ come into your life. He's awesome. Get hooked on Jesus. And, and get plugged into a cell group or a home group or a church group or any other kind of house church group or something. Something where there's followers of Jesus. Something. Please. Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. It's just, it's just a matter of fact. It's the only way. You need to have your faith in Christ. Stop being an atheist if you are one. Because if you are one, you're not smart. You're not smart if you're an atheist. You're, you're dumb if you're an atheist. The Bible says the fool said in his heart there is no God. So, I mean, so all practices purposes, you need to become a Christian, please do so. Please have faith in Christ. Please live right. Please live for God. We'll keep you out of this place. You won't, if you live for God, you won't have to go to jail, probably. If you live for God, you won't have to keep on, you know, coming to this courthouse, probably. You know, if you're a police officer and you live for God, the police department will become more righteous. The police department will become more, more awesome. Lawyers will become more righteous if they live for Christ. You know, our justice system would be awesome. If, if everybody lived for Jesus Christ, that would just be great, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be great. But the devil doesn't want you to live for Jesus Christ. He wants you to live for yourself. He wants you to live for yourself. The devil doesn't want you to repent. The devil doesn't want you to live for Jesus. And the devil doesn't want you to give up your atheism. The devil wants you to live for yourself, eat rich, and die fat. Not that there's anything wrong with being fat. It's just a matter of it. He just wants you to live for yourself. That means no grace is still your hope. He wants you to live for yourself. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Evolution is the excuse of atheists. So sad that that is the case. They use dinosaurs to prove that we came from monkeys. Where? How is that smart? Come on. How can you prove with a dinosaur fossil that we came from monkeys? The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Fool, the Bible says. It is obvious that these trees were made by God. There's a God. And there's a spirit of God. And he inspires people to come and preach the gospel sometimes. Right. What I'm doing right now is I'm you know what I'm doing right now? I'm, I'm helping two governments at the same time. Same time. I'm helping the government of God, because I'm telling you to live right and live for Jesus. And I'm helping the government of Raleigh. Because that means if you guys get get, get right with Jesus, there'll be less crime in this town and the police officers won't have to work so hard. Either give your life to Jesus Christ. If you love him, you live by his commandments. That's what he said. He said what he meant. He meant what he said. But he wasn't pulling any punches. You gotta live by his commandments. And his commandments are in the Bible. The Bible. In the Bible. I bump upon the Bible to get your attention. Commandments of Jesus. If you love me, you keep my commandments. That's what he said. And he meant what he said. He really did. He meant it. And if you don't, and if your excuse is, well, I go to church, you're going to hell. Hellfire. It's just the truth. Truth. If you suppress the truth in your godlessness and your wickedness, you're going to hellfire, you sinner. Just the way it is. Just the way it is. But I don't, I don't want to come here just to scare people. That's not my point. That's not my point. My point is, uh, Jesus made you, and He died on the cross for your sin. And that if you repent, and you uh, forget your life right, and uh, and you live for him, you'll be saved from hellfire. You'll be saved from hellfire and the judgment to come. And not only that, you'll be rewarded on judgment day. And you will store up your, for yourself treasures from heaven, the Bible says. And your name will be written in his book of life. And you will go to your deathbed in peace. Unlike the atheist who has no peace on his deathbed. One time I, I saw a preacher preaching the gospel in the out, outside. And there was an atheist girl that came up next to him. And she put a sign up and she said, I am happy without God in my life. Who cares? Who cares that she's happy without God in her life? On her deathbed, she's not going to be happy without God in her life because she's going to die in a couple of minutes. She's going to die. All right, son, preach it, son. Preach it. See, cemeteries exist. They really do. I've seen them. They exist. There's a cemetery here in Raleigh, even. In Raleigh, it's called Raleigh, Raleigh Memorial Cemetery. And guess what? When people die, that's where they go. They go there. But guess what? Their soul goes to its heaven or hell. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to meet your maker? I hope you are. I hope so. You know how I got saved? I got saved by a police officer. I 
got saved because I broke into school one day because I was being an idiot. And the police officer arrested me. Yeah. I got saved because of this gospel right here. I'm not preaching the gospel because of this courthouse right here. You know, I got saved. I was not living right. I was a thief. I was on my path to being a gangster. I was cussing like a pirate. And then, and then, a police officer arrested me because yeah, I, I broke into my middle school. Because I was being an idiot. When I was 14. And you know what? You know what happened? You know what happened? I was brought to this courthouse. And some lawyer lady told me that I got grace from the government. Grace! From the government! He said I could either go before a judge or I could do 24 hours of community service. What? So I took 24 hours of community service. And you know what happened? After that, I heard a hellfire preacher telling me to get my life right. And I did. I understood that, wow, you know, when people do things wrong, the law comes down on them and puts them in their place. And then I got to thinking after this hellfire preacher preached to me, I got to thinking, well, geez, God probably operates the same way. I mean, after all, he gave us the Ten Commandments. And then I understood, oh no, hellfire is the prison of God. Hellfire is the prison of God. When he, he gave us a way out, he gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us the cross of Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. If we repent and pray to God, we say, Jesus Christ, please forgive my sins. Help me to get right with you. He'll do it. He'll do it. And a supernatural work of God coming to your heart and will change your life. Change your life. And he'll get you out here like you're making a fool of yourself preaching the gospel. So the Bible says, we are fools for Christ's sake. Because we preach the gospel, we look like a bunch of idiots out here, waving our hands, trying to get people to believe in hell. Yeah, that sounds really foolish. But we don't have to do God, God doesn't work in our life, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. We gotta persuade men to come to Jesus. And that's really hard, by the way, because Jesus said, broad is the way to destruction, and narrow way to life. In other words, you need to walk the straight and narrow with Jesus in order to get into heaven. That's it. See, I, I would hope that everybody here would fall on their face and repent to God. That probably won't happen. What will probably happen, I think, is that two people that are listening to me today will genuinely commit their life to Jesus Christ. That's what will probably happen. But Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and few there be that find it. But narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Heaven is a narrow path. Right
devils don't keep his commandments. Now, James wrote, the devils believe and tremble. How, how, did, how did he know that? How did he know? Did he ever see that? What, what is it? 